So makikita natin that righteousness is very important not only in the kingdom of God but also in our personal lives. Napakalaga po ng katuwiran. In fact, righteousness is one of the evidences that we have found and entered the kingdom of God. Ang righteousness or katuwiran ay isa sa mga ebidensya na tayo po ay nakapasok at nakatagpo sa kaharian ng ating Diyos na buhay. That is why if we are living in a right standing before God, that means we have entered, we have found the kingdom of God. So when Apostle Paul calls the breastplate of righteousness, he is talking about the righteousness we receive by faith in Christ Jesus. The righteousness that Jesus purchased for us through His sacrificial death at the cross of Calvary. Ang breastplate of righteousness na sinasabi po ni Apostol Pablo, ito po sa Tagalog ang tinatawag nating damit ng katuwiran. At ito po ay isang damit na hindi naisuot ng pinakamayamang taong nabuhay sa balat ng lupa. King Solomon was the richest man who lived on earth. Siya po ang pinakamayamang taong nabuhay sa balat ng lupa. Pero hindi po niya naisuot ang kasuotang isinusuot natin ngayon. At yan po ang damit ng katawiran. We are being clothed with righteousness. The righteousness that Jesus purchased for us through His sacrificial death at the cross of Calvary. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, there it says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Makikita po natin that at salvation, a breastplate is issued to each repentant sinner. The breastplate has Christ's name stamped on it. Like he is saying, Your righteousness is not enough to protect you. Wear my righteousness. So nung tinanggap po natin si Jesus bilang ating Panginoon at tagapagligtas, idinamit po sa atin ang damit ng katuwiran. Kaya nga po ang Diyos ay nakatingin sa bawat isa sa atin bilang matuwid sa papamagitan ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. So we will have an illustration right here in regards to righteousness. Alright? So Brother Greg represents each one of us. Si Brother Greg ay nagre-representa po sa atin. Sa bawat isa sa ating mananampalataya. He represents you and me, Brother Greg. Brother Ver represents Jesus Christ. Okay ba yan? Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. He represents the Lord Jesus Christ. Na napako sa krus ng Calvario more than 2,000 years ago. Amen? Amen. Si Pastor John naman represents Heavenly Father. Okay ba yan, Pastor? <laughs> Amen. You represent the Heavenly Father. Right. Amen. So, nung hindi pa ta- natin tinanggap si Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior, wala pa si Jesus Christ noon sa buhay natin. Pag lumalapit tayo sa Diyos, directly to God, ang tingin ng ating Diyos Ama sa bawat taong lumalapit na walang Kristo sa buhay, ay isang makasalanan. But when we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, when we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior, Jesus Christ became our righteousness. Kaya kapag lumalapit tayo sa Diyos Ama, when we come to God in prayer, He is not looking at our past. He is not looking at our sins that we have done in the past or the sins that we will do in the future, He is looking at our representative no other than Jesus Christ. He became the bridge 
That's why we are righteous in the sight of the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Palapakan natin ang Diyos. Maraming salamat po. Father Joe. Salamat, Kuya Bear. Salamat, Kuya Greg. That's why the Bible says, For God made Christ. God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ Jesus. Yan po ang isa sa pinakamalagang bagay na dapat maunawaan ng isang mananampalataya because righteousness is a gift to be perceived. It cannot be bought or earned. It can only be received through the Son, Jesus Christ. And that is what we call imputed righteousness. Pag sinabi natin imputed righteousness, ibinigay sa atin ang katuwirang ito. The breastplate of righteousness is critical in our defense and protection because of how the enemy attacks us, his schemes against us. That's why one of the ways he attacks us is to discourage us and draw us away from the Lord is through guilt and condemnation. He always reminds us of the past mistakes. He always reminds us of the past sins. Lagi niyang nire-remind sa atin yung mga nakaraang buhay po natin. Yan po ang isa sa mga taktika po ng kaaway. Lagi niyang nire-remind sa iyo yung kasalanan mo kanina. He will always remind you of your sins the other day. He will always remind you of your sin that you have done last week. Iyan ang kanyang trabaho. He will always discourage us to come to Jesus or to come to the Father because the enemy, Satan, is the accuser of the brethren. That's why the next time the enemy, the devil, remind you of your past, remind him of his future because he will always try to convince us that we are not worthy of God's love for us di kakarapat dapat sa pagibig ng Diyos and we do not have the right to call ourselves children of God because we are sinners kaya nga po mayroong laging guilt sa ating puso yung pakiramdam na hindi tayo karapat dapat na lumapit sa ating Diyos na buhay Lord I'm not worthy to come to you. But hey, God gave His one and only Son so you could be worthy in His sight. 